Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first off, I hope that you guys can notice a bit of a difference, um, you know, if it's large or not. Uh, but we are making a lot of, you know, changes in the studio. Uh, we just upgraded the PC. We are changing a few things. We are making, you know, everything a little bit better. You know, we are kind of focusing on quality here. So I hope that, you know, things are kind of coming through. I hope that you guys can notice a little bit of a difference. Don't know if you will or not. Uh, but also, this is going to open the door for a lot more streams. I took a little bit of a break from streaming simply because... You know, the other PC could just not handle it. So I hope that you guys notice the difference. We are going to be doing a lot more streaming. So with that being said, let's dive in and let's talk about a few things. So I tweeted this tweet out and I said, when the dollar you know, chart breaks, the fun begins. Um, a multi-year bull run is nearing yet again. And now is the time to prepare. And talking about this, We've been discussing the dollar for a while. Everyone has been trying to make their you know, own assumptions on when it is going to top. I don't really care about that. All I care about is, hey, when is this chart going to break? Because that is when we will become rich. And if you think I'm joking, I'm not. I'm going to show you guys here in a second. But first off, uh, we do see this tweet from DA underscore D Joe. And we do see shorting crypto assumes this chart must go even higher. The dollar already went on a rip. A parabolic rise implies more risk for the dollar in the short term and relatively low risk for the crypto space. And yes, when we actually look at the dollar going back in time, let's just go back to March of 2020, right? Um, here is this time frame of when the dollar topped all the way to the point where it kind of started to gain a little bit of momentum. But this is when the crypto market topped. You can kind of see the correlation here. Um, once the dollar topped, a lot of money poured into risk on assets and out of the US dollar. Um, a lot of individuals were buying you know, risk on assets like stocks and crypto, et cetera. Um, and you can definitely see that in regards to the chart. I mean, it's a very steep chart. And this lasted about 602 days officially. Um, right now we are watching to see if the dollar is going to top because even back in, you know, 2017, 2018 as well, you know, this yellow line down here is the total chart for crypto. Uh, this only goes back to about 2014. So we only have that, uh, price data there. Uh, but during this time, this is when like, you know, crypto, uh, topped back in 2013, 2014 anyways. And you could kind of see the overall chart here for the dollar. I mean, the dollar gained a ton of momentum during that time. But then again, it did also top out back in January of 2017. During this time, we did see the 2017-2018 bull run. And don't let it, you know, uh, distract you a little bit. There was a little bit of an increase here in regards to uh, the crypto market. It wasn't as steep as we are used to seeing right now because there is a lot more money in this game. Uh, but during this time, you know, you can see the topping point here. We could actually kind of look at this on the chart in regards to time frame. Uh, so from the topping point, the dollar didn't bottom until a little bit after the uh, bull run top, but it was about 364 days. You know, I'm not going to, you know, look at these time frames and say, hey, you know, we should be extending this and we're going to, you know, run a lot more or a lot longer, I should say. No, I don't really care about, um, you know, guessing that or anything. All I'm trying to show you guys here is why we should be watching the dollar closely and why it is a bullish factor when it does top. Uh, this is a very, very large bullish indicator that we will see a lot more money flooding into crypto and risk on assets. But what we do need to see is a clear topping point for the dollar, which I do believe that we are nearing. Um, and when we look at the overall chart, I know it's just a line uh, for the you know crypto market cap. You can kind of see that it almost looks like we did bottom out officially back in June, um, and you could technically say that you know the dollar is a little bit overstretched here. It's overbought, um, and I would say that it is overvalued as well. You know it is what it is, but I'm just watching crypto right now because if you look at you know historical time frames on a bear market. It is ultimately the best time to DCA in, average in, and not really care about the price that you were seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. All we know right now is that this entire market, comparing it to November, is undervalued. And when we talk about XRP, a lot of things are happening um, in regards to the SEC lawsuit. 
I know that a lot of individuals have been for the longest time focused on XRP's price action. And I know that this is, you know, something that a lot of individuals kind of get caught up in. Um, I myself am, you know, <laughs> I, I do this a lot as well. I, I, I look back on timeframes. I'm like, wow, you know, this token's undervalued, but it hasn't moved in so long. Is it even worth putting my money into? And I want to say whenever you think like that, it most likely is the best time to actually look at it and, you know, maybe even DCA it in. Uh, but XRP, we do see here a settlement between XRP and the SEC could be imminent. Now, why is this significant? Well, when we actually look at the SEC lawsuit, it has stifled the price action of XRP for a very long time, for over, you know, two years now. Um, I know that a lot of people don't want to look at this in, you know, a realistic viewpoint, uh, but it's illogical to argue the fact that XRP's price was not hyper suppressed. It, the, the lawsuit came out December of 2020, a month before this entire market went absolutely crazy. So to undercut and basically throw XRP down the stairs and say, all right, yeah, it's useless. I'm never buying it just because of its performance in the bull run of 2020 into 2021 would be illogical. And I think that we should all be looking at the price action of XRP during 2017 and 2018, because during that time, there was just a lot of speculation that actually kind of played into the fire of the price action. Uh, but now we have a lot of confirmed you know, news. We have a lot of things happening within XRP and the XRP community. So to me personally, I think that right now, um, I just feel confident being positioned into XRP, understanding you know what could happen after this lawsuit is over. And do I think that a settlement could be imminent? 100%, we're going to be talking about that as well. We do see down here, you know, Ripple may reportedly be close to settling out of court with the SEC. Legal action by the SEC has brought many cryptocurrency issuers such as Kick, a messaging app, to what amounts to sudden death. A settlement would be good news for the thousands of XRP holders around the world, said analysts, and is seen as the more likely outcome. And I completely agree. And also over here, we do see from Jungle Inc. Uh, XRP, interesting observations. Why rush out summary judgment briefs on a Saturday night? Why nothing from library judge? No mention of Hinman. Only two footnote mentions of Ethereum. Very polite filing by Ripple in terms of the SEC. And we do see down here, kind of makes you, you know, think they're negotiating a, a settlement, especially since they're not wanting to, you know, or sorry, waiting for the rolling on the Hinman emails. And yes, I do completely agree. I think that we are possibly on the verge of seeing a settlement. That is, of course, my viewpoint on this. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And we do see here from Jeremy Hogan, video tomorrow. I just read the briefs and the SEC has got a couple of big problems. One, its expert agrees that most of the changes in the XRP price are due to market forces and not Ripple. Ouch. These types of con uh, concessions are perfect for, you know, summary judgment. And uh, we also do see down here, you know, the SEC failed to get on record that any XRP purchaser heard Ripple's alleged marketing pitch a big problem because it has the burden to prove everything here. And of course, a lot of other staff, which I will do my best to lay out in the video by tomorrow night if I can sleep. Uh, or sorry, stuff, not staff. And yes, shout out to Jeremy Hogan. If you guys do want to go check that video out, um, it is most likely going to be published later on today. Um, incredible content, incredible breakdowns. Listen, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, in the you know legal area or anything like that. So, you know, from my best judgment, I always love watching Jeremy's videos just simply because it gives me a little bit of a better insight on this lawsuit and what is happening. So definitely go check that out. If you guys, you know, can, I, I don't know when it's going to go live, but uh, definitely watch out for it because I think that's going to be great. And yes, th this, uh, um, you know, summary judgment was huge. And I think that this is probably one of the biggest stepping stones in this market uh, for XRP, simply because this was probably one of the biggest updates pushed around this SEC lawsuit in a very long time. And I thought it was actually very weird to see this happen on a Saturday as well. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And also from Brad Garlinghouse and even Stuart Outerati, we do see here today's filings made it or sorry, make it clear that the SEC isn't interested in applying the law. They want to remake it all in an impersonable uh, effort to expand their jurisdiction far beyond the authority granted to them by Congress. And we even do see down here, my hot take, after two years of litigation, the SEC is unable to identify any contract for investment. That's what the statute requires and cannot satisfy a single uh, prong of the Supreme Court's Howey test. Everything else is just noise. 
Congress only gave the SEC jurisdiction over securities. Let's get back to what the law says. And I completely agree. The SEC is overreaching in regards to power, and they have no jurisdiction in this market. It needs to stop in regards to the overreach of power. And to me, the last thing that I want to talk about is from library. And we do see here yesterday, Gary Gensler testified the SEC would need another 10 years before they could release public roles on blockchain. 10 years. Make no mistake, Gary Gensler is out to destroy cryptocurrency in the United States. This means that if you had a baby when the first Bitcoin block was mined, the baby would be old enough to drink before the SEC plans to publicly release blockchain roles. This is an issue. I know that these, you know, analogies here and stuff like that is a little bit of a joke, but ultimately it is ridiculous. Think about that. And also the reasoning behind this for them to publicly release these blockchain roles is for the next 10 years, it allows them to openly and publicly attack crypto and put it into this limelight of, you know, crypto being this big scam or you should stay out of crypto. Don't invest any of your money in crypto. I want you guys to also understand that right now, those individuals that are terrified to jump into crypto because of the SEC are not being hurt by what the SEC is doing. They're being hurt by what they are missing out on because of what the SEC is doing. The SEC is stopping so many individuals from making life-changing wealth. And everyone has their own definition of life-changing you know, changing wealth. Some have you know, 100,000, 1 million, 10 million, whatever. It does not matter. At the end of the day, we know that crypto is the key to unlocking massive amounts of wealth. If you look at you know, the charts, let's go back to the dollar chart. I know that we just looked at it, but if you look at where you know, crypto bottomed out you know, during March of 2020 to where it topped in November, there is nothing like this market. Yeah, go ahead and argue XRP. You know, a lot of people want to, you know, doubt XRP and what XRP could ultimately do. So let me actually get rid of uh, the crypto chart here. So let me actually get rid of uh, a few things on this. Let me go back in and reload this up just so that we can kind of see this in a little bit of a better light. One second. Um, let me just refresh. I know that it's a little bit weird when you have the comparison chart on there. Let me go to XRP USD. So let's go and actually compare this. So when we look at this chart, so I've been looking at the FIB levels for XRP and we've actually been looking at this in regards to a settlement. Um, my personal favorite target on this chart is that 1618 at $26. I know that $26 might not seem like a lot to some people when you know you are being touted that XRP is going to be backed by gold or whatever. Um, but I want you guys to understand that $26 is a great start. I mean, just recently, if you actually look at you know, we'll say the bottoming point of you know XRP during uh, June. That $26 is nearly a 100x opportunity. A 100x opportunity on a gold or on a blue chip stock like XRP, that is incredible. And is $26 guaranteed? No, absolutely not. But I think that $26 is a pretty good area of focus if we are talking about a settlement, if we are talking about all of the major updates around XRP. And if you actually look at the fib, uh, fib levels off of the log scale here, uh, we could also see that this would be the last outreach. The last token that I know that did do an outreach like this was Luna. And we know where Luna, you know, went to. So to me personally, with, with how much, you know, overall utility XRP has and, you know, catalyst behind it, I do think that we could see those prices, but I'm more so dead set on 10 to $15. And around like $14.88, almost a $15 range, this would still be a 51x opportunity. And from our current price action, just our current price you know, at the moment, this would be about a 40x opportunity. That is still very, very good. Now, are we going to justify the moves just by you know, fib, uh, FIB levels alone? Not necessarily. Could we see $50? Could we see $100 after settlement? You know, we could. I'm not going to get caught up in it though. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with it, a little bit more realistic, just because, you know, listen, at the end of the day, we're here to make money and secure profits. And 
you know, with XRP, I will always have a moon bag. I will always have a substantial amount of XRP because we don't know where XRP could go. Could it go to a hundred to a thousand dollars? Anything is possible. I don't really write off anything with XRP. I think that the potential and the power behind XRP and with, you know, what Ripple is doing with it is endless. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely have a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.